Hi, thanks for coming back to the chopping block. You'll recall that I did a video for the AR15.com YouTube channel where I compared real ballistic gelatin to clear gel. And last week I published a video showing 300 rip out in real ballistic gelatin. This week I'd like to take a look at the same round in clear gel. One, two, four. All right. So uh, that rain's starting to make this kind of cloud up even worse. There we go, it's a little closer. Okay, so here's the impact. Obviously started to upset about there, lots of temporary stretch cavity. Another real good dieseling flash that I could see with the naked eye. That should show up real great on high speed. Lots of fragments that came way, way off the main path. That's maybe not ideal for pistol rounds, but that's that's great for something moving at 2,000 feet per second. You can see that these fragments got a lot deeper here than they did in the natural gelatin test. Seven and a half, nine, about 11 and a half. I gotta move the tape measure a little bit. Another 11 and a half, and then 11 and a half. And then the core got to 22 inches. I don't know. I've got some kind of mixed feelings on it. On the one hand, you know, it's kind of gimmicky and all that, and the part of the bullet that gets nice and deep isn't very big but you know it usually isn't with a rifle round and getting all of this mean nasty stuff going on in there I I don't know I kind of kind of feel like that's not actually all that bad okay so fragmentation like that isn't good in a pistol round obviously but we kind of like to see fragmentation like that in a rifle round. At 2,000 feet per second, that extra fragmentation can create significantly more tissue damage. It can turn the stretch cavity into permanent cavity by causing tears as the stretch cavity expands. Now, some people might argue that there wasn't a lot of mass to the core, that it wasn't very big and all that, and then, yeah, that's true, but, you know, if you think about it, the core of a 64 grain trophy bonded bear claw isn't very big after it has reached its maximum depth. That the majority of wounding in most of these really high-end rifle rounds comes in that first uh, 10 inches or so. And that's also what we saw with the 300 blackout or 300 ripout or whatever they want to call it. Honestly, I think it performed pretty well considering that it's a rifle round. We would not want to see that sort of thing in a pistol, but that's not bad. In fact, I'd even go so far as to say this is one of the very few rounds that makes 300 blackout more effective than 556 in some ways. We'll see how it does through barriers and whatnot. But otherwise, I'd say that's a win. If you think I got something wrong, if you disagree with me, if you hate gimmick ammo or if you love it, make sure you leave a comment below. As always, liking and subscribing makes a big difference to channels like mine makes a big difference to all YouTube channels, but especially small channels like mine benefit a great deal when you share our videos on social media. Thanks for your support. I hope you have a great day.